Good morning viewers and listeners. You are welcome in EduSet Network. I am Dr. Parveen Sharma, Associate Professor in Hindu College of Education, Sonipat. I have produced various books. My papers in national and international journals are being published. Various scholars have submitted PhD thesis under my supervision. Now, I am before you, we will be speaking on the topic memory and forgetting. Let us start with the topic. Well, a famous psychologist, Friar, says like this, we forget to pay our bills, but we remember our checks always. What is it? why we do not forget our checks and why we forget our bills. So, in this session, we will be talking on this issue, what do we mean by memory and why do we forget, what is it, what are the factors underlying this issue, why do we forget and how to ensure good memory because this is the duty, this is the liability of the teachers to tell the strategies to their students to adopt the right methods so that there is 100% memory on the part of the students. So, so, in this session, we will be taking all the issues related to memory and forgetting one by one. So, in the beginning, we will be seeing what do we mean by memory. What is the concept of memory? You know, learning plays a significant role in all walks of human life. We, through our specific power, collect experiences, preserve them, and make use of them whenever required. In this psychological work, this ability of retention and repeating is known as memory. The term memory is used to mean an act of remembering some particular event. Learning would be futile if its products cannot be utilized by us in the future. Whatever is learned need to be somehow stored in the mind so that it can be utilized whenever required in the future. It means the experiences that we are able to remember is called memory. In psychological terms, the faculty of the mind to store the past experiences and then to reproduce them for use when required in later life is termed as memory. Let us define the other definitions how the various psychologists has defined memory. According to Woodworth, a famous psychologist, memory involves learning, retention, recall and recognition. And on the other hand, Ryburn, the other psychologist says, the power that we have to store our experiences and bring them into the field of our consciousness sometime after the experiences have occurred is termed as memory. In the words of Ross, memory is a new experience determined by the disposition laid down by previous experiences, the relation between the two being clearly understood. And in the words of Stout, the ideal revival, so far as ideal revival is merely reproductive in which the objects of past experience are reinstated as far as possible in the order and manner of their original occurrence is known as memory. See, in this slide, it refers to the processes that are used to acquire, store, retain and later retrieve information because first we acquire the things, then store, then retain and then retrieve the information. It is the storage of learned information for retrieval and future use. Fundamental component of daily life. See, what is the use of learning some material if we are not able to store it and we are not able to reproduce the material when at a particular time we are supposed to reproduce it. So, 
if it will be futile if we are not able to store it and we are not able to reproduce it at a time when we require. So, it is essential that whatever a child, whatever an individual has learned, it should be stored in a proper manner in the mind and the learner should be able to reproduce the learnt material whenever up at a particular time it is required by the individual. See, we will discuss further what are the kinds of memory. First is the immediate and permanent memory. What is this immediate memory? Immediate whatever we have learnt right now and we are able to produce the material at the moment after learning. And what is the permanent? When we give a time gap after a lapse of time we want to produce the same material then we can say that it is the permanent memory. And the Second category is the personal memory when at a time we are reminded of our personal experiences uh, at a particular moment or with the uh, memories or association of uh, some person, some event, some place when we are made memorize and we are uh, reminded of some personal experiences that is, this is known as our personal uh, memory and the another one is impersonal memory when suppose uh, we walk from some place and the memories or the events related to that particular place are reminded to us that is known as impersonal memory. Then the third is the rote and logical memory. Rote memory is uh, when we memorize something without understanding, without reasoning, without logical thinking that it is known as a mechanical or as known as rote memory. And the uh, same uh, in the same category the next is the logical memory when we learn something we understand it and we have logical reasoning behind it why this uh, thing has happened and what are the reasons what will be the uh, re, uh, consequences of that particular event or uh, then it is known as logical memory and the active and passive memory when in a particular event the person is active and with the deliberate efforts one is reminded of the events of the events then we can say that it is the active memory of the individual and the passive memory is when one is not making the deliberate effort to remember it but the things related to his associations related to it comes in the mind of the individual then we can say it is the passive memory where the individual is not making deliberate effort but the stream of consciousness it is known uh, in the literature the feeling uh, stream of consciousness when one thought from the another thought comes out we say that it is a passive memory uh, for example uh, you are you as a teacher are teaching in the classroom and you uh, give example that when I went to South Africa and then uh, suppose in the class some students they in their thoughts in their imagination reaches to South Africa and you are giving example of some uh, study and then you come to the next point then the one thought from the another thought comes out it is known as stream of consciousness. Next is this uh, physiological and psychological memory. When we make uh, uh, experiences or we make experiments, then after the physical activity, motor activity, uh, some events are take uh, firm grip in the mind of the learner. We say that it is a physiological memory and the psychological memory is uh, this is related to our interest, our attitude, our motivation, then these factors are uh, suppose someone is uh, tired then the memory is less. So, this is known as psychological memory. I am repeating the kinds of memory. First is the immediate and permanent memory. Second is the personal and impersonal memory. Third is the rote and logical memory. Fourth is the active and passive memory. And the fifth is physiological and psychological memory. Now we come to discuss what are the factors influencing memory as in the beginning I have said that we never forget our checks. So what are the factors when, which influence one individual's memory? First is the health. Health is very important. Uh, it is said that health is wealth. So when any individual is healthy physically and mentally as well then 
will be able to memorize more then there will be more and more learning so it is the first factor that individual must be healthy if the person is healthy will be able to do the uh, work very well will be able to perform the activities which are assigned to him or her very well so health is the important factor which influence the memory second is the attention it is very important on the part of the individual that when a uh, something is going on we should sit attentively suppose uh, a teacher is uh, teaching in the classroom and students are sitting there and they are attentive then the uh, topic or the content or the material which is being presented by the teacher will be grasped uh, very easily uh, interestingly by the learner because the learner is sitting attentive so it is very important to see sometimes uh, students are not attentive and if we just conclude the le lesson was not interesting or the teacher was not effective and the method was not appropriate whereas these factors were not working there what was the reason the student the individual who was sitting in the classroom was not attentive so my dear friends it is very important to know on the part of the students that one must be attentive in the classroom if the learner wants to memorize the things in a very fine manner then the third is the impressions it is very important to know for the students that there are some impressions which are formed in the mind of the listeners when a lesson when a topic is going on in the classroom teacher is teaching so it is very important what are the impressions being uh, formed on the mind of the learner so the um, what kind of impression are formed it is important to know because the impressions which are formed on the mind of the learner influence the capacity or intensity of the memory then repetition sometime we teach the lesson students listen and uh, a huge gap comes uh, and after a great interval it may be possible quite possible that the students may forget because after some time uh, the material which is learnt which is heard which is seen goes natural uh, by a natural process in the subconscious memory in the passive memory and without making deliberate effort one is not able to memorize what was done in the classroom so it is very important for the learners for the teachers as well that it should be recapitulated it should be repeated after some time because if it is not repeated then the material which is learnt by the students will go in the passive memory of the learners then association it is very important that uh, the material which we learn should be associated with something you know uh, i am giving you a very interesting example sometimes students uh, confuse themselves at a very early a very early stage in these spellings of principal and principal so uh, at the, uh, i told my bh students when you t uh, go uh, to teach in the schools to the beginners you can say, say when they confuse their their self in the spelling of principal you say rampal is our principal in the manner that p a l will be the head of the person when we use principal not the siddhant uh, so uh, in this manner by making associations we can memorize very well uh, and the intelligence moreover it depends that the individual who is learning who is memorizing what kind of intelligence he or she is having because we know by the time that intelligence is an innate capacity of an individual so it depends on the capacity or the intelligence level of the learners how much he or she is able to memorize the concept which has been learnt by him or her because uh, sometime uh, we see that there are three kinds of students sitting in a classroom intelligent and average and some are below average so it depends on the intelligence level of the uh, learners moreover attitude of learner 
it is said these days that it is not your aptitude rather it is your attitude which takes you to the altitude which takes you to the height uh, if you want to achieve your destination if you want to have success in your desired fields you should have a right attitude so my dear friends it depends on the attitude of the learner what kind of attitude he or she is having towards a particular concept suppose teacher is teaching with the proper teaching method and with the use of proper uh, audio visual aids and method is selected appropriate according to the level of the students but sometime student is not having a proper attitude to re desired attitude or required attitude towards that particular uh, content then the learning will be less memory will be less so it is very important to decide what is the attitude of the learner because this is the important factor to influence the memory of the learner then nature of learning material it is also important what kind of learning material is being provided if students feel that it is boring the method by the teacher may be adopted very well according uh, to the uh, level of the uh, target target group but if the students find it that it is boring it is not interesting or it is not useful for them then there will be less memory method of learning as earlier i have spoken and all of you know by the time that there are Uh, different kinds of students the individual differences exist so we cannot teach all students by the same method we have to see what is our target group where we are teaching after knowing these concepts psychologically then we will decide the method so it depends what kind of method has been chosen by the teacher and individual as well as uh, learner has to see which method is effective for me which method is liked by me and what kind of content i have to perform so it is important to know what kind of method is uh, used is adopted because it influences the memory and the last but not less, uh, least is the speed of learning speed of learning should be genuine it should not be very fast and it should not be very slow it should be genuine there is no set criteria what is genuine the learner has to see himself or herself what speed will be genuine for me for that particular topic and here comes the reference of the uh, time management student has to learn the skill of time management how much content i have to memorize within given period and what kind of method i should uh, be using and uh, what should be my speed so uh, these are the factors uh, i am repeating once again first is the health second is attention impression reputation association intelligence attitude of learner nature of learning material method of learning and speed of learning my dear friends these are the factors which influence memory so students have to keep in mind these factors if they want to ensure themselves that memory should be more and more see what are the marks of good memory we will decide here what are the marks of good memory how we can see there are uh, different aspects first it should be a good learning if we are not able to reproduce the learnt material and it is not stored then uh, learning is futile so it should be good learning good retention it should be uh, there should be retention if we have learnt and we are not able to store it then there is no use because if there is no retention we won't be able to produce it at a required time good recall so the third mark of uh, good memory is uh, whenever we want to recall it because we are needing that particular uh, knowledge at a time so we should be able to recall it that the third sign is the good recall fourth is the good recognition we should be able to recognize well uh, the concept the event the memory the laws the principles whatever is required by us for a particular thing and the last is the forgetting unrelevant things my dear friends it is very important to know how to forget the unrelevant things 
uh, I am trying to explain this with example. There is the capacity, uh, we know that there is the capacity of the SIM card of the mobile or the computer. We have to delete the um, uh, which are the in, uh, information which are not related, which are not required in the same manner in the brain. Uh, is having so many informations. If we want to store important things, relevant things, then we will have to forget the uh, and we will have to delete those unpleasant or sadistic or uh, undesirable uh, feelings from the mind because if we store all the unrelevant uh, things in the mind, then how would you allow because you have closed the door and so many like Chokidar, they are uh, sitting on the uh, doors of the brain and they don't allow uh, the, uh, the good things to enter in the mind. So what will be the result? The good or the re relevant material won't be able to store in the brain. So it is the mark of the good memory that we have to delete the unrelevant things from the mind. Don't allow, clean it. As we clean our room daily in the same manner, we have to see that we have to uh, keep our mind clean and we have to just get it away from the uh, unrelevant things. I have said that good learning, good retention, good recall, good recognition and forget unrelevant things. What is the nature of memory? Memory is a mental activity, it is a physical activity. First, I will explain how it is a physical activity. The memory traces are the basis of memory in the form of functional tendency. Suppose we repeat uh, as a motor activity some experiences, some events, then it is a physical activity, traces are formed on the mind. But uh, there are some psychologists like Barlett, Pyron and Lipson, they advocate that memory depends more on mental states like interest, motivation, etc. than on reputation of experiences. As the first group of psychologists, they say that it is a physical activity. But on the other hand, Barlett, Pyron and Lipson, they say it is not a physical activity because the other psychological terms which are related to the individual like his interest, his motivation, his attitude, his intelligence, as I have spoken just now, uh, his attitude and moreover his tendency, his intelligence. So all these things, they influence the uh, learning or the memory. So on the third aspect, we say uh, what is the nature of memory as, memory as a process, Me how the memory is a process. First, we learn something, then we store it, it is known as retention, then the third is the recall and the fourth is recognition. I would like to explain it. Learning according to Gates and other, learning is the modification of behavior through experience and training for a good memory. Learning is a very important prerequisite. Guilford has correctly remarked for an efficient memory, learning is more than half the battle won. If we are not able to learn how we will be able to reproduce it. So first in the process we say that learning is important, learning should be effective, learning should be efficient. In the process second part is the retention. After learning what we do, what happens, our mind, our brain uh, gives the information after learning we try to store it. Retention is the factor responsible for preserving the material learnt. Learning experiences give certain programs on the brain which are preserved or retained first in conscious mind then in unconscious mind through the subconscious. Retention helps in retaining the things learned previously. James William believes that retention is a physiological quality give only once for all with his organization which she or he can never hope to change the following factors affect retention and capacity of the individuals. This is also influenced by many factors like nature of material, what kind of material we are giving, methods of learning, methods also influence how we learn. Then the speed of learning I have already explained, speed also influences mental set. I would like to focus on it. What is the mental set of the uh, learner? <coughs> Suppose 
as I have already spoken, teacher is teaching in an effective manner by using effective method according to the target group accord and the teaching aids are selected very well, but the mental set of the learner is not there. He is sitting disturbed, suppose for example, maybe belonging to a broken home or peer pressure or may, be, may not be physically well or the lesson is not interesting to him or uh, he or she feels that the teacher uh, is having a partial behavior with me. So, maybe due to this one reason mental set of the learner is not in balance. So, this mental set will influence the learning or the memory. Then the thinking and reasoning. Thinking and reasoning also influence the storage power then the recency and frequency of impression. It is also to be known, to be understood that the recent impressions, recent experiences are learnt well and if the impressions after some time become weaker and weaker, fainter and fainter, then the learning will be less. Because my dear friends, we should know here in this reference that when we learn something, when we memorize something, they leave the impressions on, the, on our mind. But when after some time they are not revised, they are not recapitulated, they are not repeated, those layers on the mind becomes fainter and fainter, becomes weaker and weaker and those experiences, those memories, those kind of learning material uh, from the active memory, it transfers into the passive memory. So, uh, it, it is to be known that the uh, it should be repeated frequently and there should not be a, a big gap interval. Then the individual differences, individual differences always exist because maybe due to genes, maybe due to environment, maybe due to ideas or aspirations of the parents, maybe due to the examples set by the teachers and where, uh, in, in which kind of community, which kind of uh, race you are born and above all uh, the aspirations and ideals of the learner it, itself, what he or she is want to become in the life, the goals. Uh, are they realistic or above realistic? So, all these things they influence the retention. Then recall, after the learning and retention there comes the recall. It is the third important factor of the memory. It is the mental revival of those experiences which have been learnt. It requires the reproduction of material, events or activities through learning and retention. If we have better retention power, then we shall be able to recall the things quickly. Of course, I have said that we, if we learn, we memorize, but if we are not able to recall it at a time when we require it, then all learning, all memory is futile because when we require it, we are not able to recall and there are two types of recall, spontaneous recall and deliberate recall. Uh, there are two types of recall. Uh, first, in the spontaneous recall, what happens uh, if uh, we come across a place and we have so many re uh, memories related to that place, so many things come in our mind without making the effort because it is all spontaneous. So many memories, suppose. Uh, you come uh, across, you pass by your college, you come to reminded so many <coughs> good golden days and the so many memories of your friends, your colleagues, your teachers and the roundabout happenings all uh, comes in your mind spontaneously. You don't have to make efforts. But on the other side, the deliberate recall is when you want to recollect something, you have to make effort, you try, uh, someone uh, meets you and he asks you, could you replace me, could you recognize me? You say, oh, I have seen you somewhere, but I am not able to recognize where I have seen you. Then the person says, I met you there in the conference, I met you there. Then the memories or some associations come your mind and you make effort, yes, I have seen you, I saw the, you there, we met there in the seminar. So this is the deliberate recall. So there are two kinds of recall 
recall, spontaneous recall and the deliberate recall. In the first, you do not have to make efforts, all the memories, all the events come in your mind without making effort and the for the second one, you have to make efforts and the fourth is the recognition. It is the awareness of the experiences that has been previously known or retained the individual is able to identify different objects due to recognition ability. In recognition, the subject is added by a sense perception of the familiar experiences. It is the remembering of something present, identify something you have previously perceived. Full recognition involves recall of the circumstances of the pre previous perceptions. There are two types of recognition, indefinite recognition and definite recognition. Sometimes we recognize something but not for a permanent memory. After some time we may forget but in definite recognition they turns into the permanent memory and they, they have no scope of letting the, those experience in, in the passive memory. They always remain in our active memory. Further after this, we will come, how do we forget, do, uh, we are, how much we are responsible naturally or in a morbid manner, we will come to that aspect. Uh, and the factors of recognition, there are two factors I am mentioning, there are maybe other factors, uh, but I am talking about two, confidence and mental setup. It is our confidence, we have to boost up ourselves because if we are not confident, we are puzzled, we are confused, then the recognition will not be. So, we have to tell ourselves, I am confident enough, I can do it, I can perform very well, oh, nothing to fear, nothing to afraid of. So, confidence is must, sometimes we know the things and we can do, but confidence is lacking and sometime I am sorry to say that the teachers or the elders or the parents or the members in the community discourage the children by saying, oh you can't do it, then the confidence will be lacking. So, it is to be understood by all the stakeholders, maybe teachers, parents and the members, senior members in the community and our peer group members that never discourage any individual because confidence is the biggest factor in recognizing the learnt material because if we are not able to recognize the learnt material when we require suppose you have learnt, you have memorized and you are trying to answer the question in the examination hall and you are not able to recognize then the all learning will be futile. So, it is essential to recall and recognize the learnt material at a particular time when you require it. And the uh, second one is the mental setup. Mental setup is also important as we have uh, said earlier that mental setup is very important. Sometime uh, we can do the things, but it is lying in our mental uh, or in our mind that I can't do it. So, this way we are not able to recognize already we have some presumptions that it is very difficult or uh, when we uh, go to meet someone already we have in our mind, oh he is Ill, uh, Ill tempered person. So, already we have fixed in our mind. So, we cannot find him in a uh, talking in a good manner because already we have assumptions in our mind. So, mental setup in uh, learning the material is very important. Then the fourth aspect is memory as a product. We have discussed is a physical activity, it is a uh, psychological activity and the process of activity and the fourth is memory as a product. What is the uh, memory as a product? Uh, it is the uh, it uh, referring to the uh, input of the sensory organs and after encoding what happens the material which which is learned or which is memorized by us uh, is stored in the brain. But this storage in the brain should be a planned manner. If we are not able to store the memory or the learnt material in a proper manner, then all will be haphazard. So, it is very important when we learn the material. So, this uh, coded material should be stored in the brain in a very well organized and planned manner because if the storage 
or the collection of our experiences or the learnt material is in a planned manner, then we will be able to retrieve it when we are uh, required to reproduce it. So, it the product will be fine when we encode very well, we store and we retrieve. So, it is important. Uh, so, we have discussed the nature of memory. In this we have discussed four things, it is a physical activities, but the other group of psychologists say no it is not a physical activities, it is related to our psychological aspects like motivation, interest, attitude, intelligence, mental setup and so on, background of the learners, aspirations of the learners and ideals of the parents, occupation of the parents and the parent and these days we are focusing on the parenting style. Uh, you know it, it depends on the parenting style also. Uh, in the yesterday evening also I was discussing with uh, some friends that uh, how the uh, children are sometimes very indisciplined. So, I hope parenting style is also matters because when you are alone in the house uh, with your children you yourself should be disciplined so that directly or indirectly your children notice that how much disciplined you are. So, and after that uh, the we have discussed the process and this we say learning and the retention and the uh, re recall and uh, recognition. And in the fourth one th that memory as a product uh, this is the encoding, storing and retrieving. So, my dear friends this is the nature of memory. Later on we will discuss how to ensure the better memory forgetting. See in this picture forgetting. How uh, the forgetting is taking place in this slide because I have told you uh, that I have told you that after some time it becomes fainter and fainter and uh, we are not able to recognize it see I am coming to it how it happens forgetting the lines are getting weaker and weaker then concept of forgetting what is concept of forgetting forgetting is the opposite of learning in learning the child keeps a thing in memory while in forgetting she or he fails to fails to bring to the conscious plane what she has remembered. In normal course we find the process of forgetting quite unusual in life. It is helpful in certain respects and harmful also in other respects. When we forget painful things it is useful, but when we forget useful things it is harmful. And referring the same thing in the beginning, if we forget our checks it is painful, but when we forget our bills or you can say okay, it is not painful. So, forgetting is sometime bliss and sometime it is a curse. When we forget our failures, lost of our <coughs> uh, loved ones or the bitter experiences, then forgetting becomes a bliss. But when a student forgets the answers in the examination hall, it becomes a curse. So, we will be discussing how the forgetting is a curse, how it is a bliss and how it happens, what are the causes behind it, how a students forget. See, let us see, first we will define how the various psychologists has defined uh, the forgetting. Driver James says forgetting means failure at any time to recall an experience when attempting to do so or to perform an action previously learnt. According to Nunn, forgetting is failing to retain or able to recall what has been acquired. See in this picture one of the keys to happiness is a bad memory. It is somewhat a satire like uh, it is said that if you want to remain happy, you should have a bad memory in the sense that you have to forget the painful experiences, the painful memories. Ebbinghaus, a famous psychologist, I am showing in this slide, forgetting curve. Ebbinghaus, famous psychologist says that when you 
learn a material, you memorize immediate memories 100 percent. Students feel that I have learned and I have memorized it is 100 percent and after 20 minutes retention is 58 percent. After one hour the retention is 44 percent. After 9 hours the retention is 36 percent. After one day it is 33 percent, after two days it is 28 percent and after six days it is 25 percent and after 31 days it is 21 percent. So with this slide we can say that there should not be a big interval after the learnt material, it should be revised, it should be repeated and it should be recapitulated because if there is a big interval it will be forgotten as I have said that sometime forgetting is a curse because if this way a student forget the answers in the examination hall then it is a curse. So it can be said, it can be uh, concluded in this reference that there should be a repetition or revision of the learnt material. I will take what are the kinds of forgetting, there are two kinds of forgetting, first is the normal or natural. As we cannot retain each and every incident, some are forgotten. This is due to the fact that with the passage of time or due to disuse of material learnt, we are likely to forget most of the material because we have not revised it and there is a gap, there is a big interval, so natural forgetting takes place. But in the abnormal or morbid or second type of category, Freud says forgetting is due to conscious repression by the subject. We do not want to retain unpleasant and painful memories in mind, so they are deliberately repressed in the unconscious. In this reference, the Freud great psychologist has given a very good example. He conducted a study on a lady where she forgot the face of her lover whom she loved intensely but the boy did not respond to her love to what happened in the later because it was a painful and bitter memory for the lady and the lastly the lady forgot the face of that boy whom she loved so intensely because the feeling was bitter. Through this experiment, through this study, Freud wanted to say that it is a kind of morbid or abnormal uh, forgetting and moreover it is said that sometime you have to forget to forgive. If you want to forgive someone that you will have to forget. So in this sense forgetting is essential because if you do not forget the errors or the mistakes committed by the other persons you won't be able to forgive that person. So in this reference one has to uh, forget some bitter experiences unpleasant memories. So these are two kinds of memory, first is the normal where uh, with the passage of time one naturally forgets but in the second one abnormal or morbid one tries to forget the bitter things, unpleasant memories. Then forgetting of things past, see in this slide researchers begin to unravel why our memory fails us and how to make us forget when we need to. Sometime we want to recall, we want to recognize but we are not able to memorize. Next, how can you forgive if you can't forget I have said so sometime you have to forget factors or causes responsible for forgetting. First is the retroactive inhibition. Forgetting takes place due to retroactive inhibition, the interference with retention by activities in which a person engages between the learning and the test or retention is known as retroactive inhibition. In controlled experiments, some other learning is introduced during the interval and this is called interpolated activity. In simple words, Retroactive inhibition is used to describe the interference in which the new material works in the recall of the previously learnt material and the interference of old material with the new one is called proactive inhibition. There are two kinds of interference when the previous learnt material 
uh, interfere in the another one, then it is called proactive and when the new one interferes in the old one, we call it retroactive inhibition. There are two kinds of factor which inhibit in the forgetting. See in this first learn proactive interference and the second is the retroactive interference. Factors which influence retroactive inhibition are similarity. Sometime we start a work which is similar then this kind of similarity brings inhibition and one is likely to forget the previous work because the new one which has been started is the similar then the meaningfulness. Meaningfulness is not there then the uh, material will be forgotten. Degree of learning how much level we have attained in learning whether we have learnt it quite or we are just uh, ha half the way. Then amount of learning material, how much we have learnt and the associations, our associations reminds us the learnt material. Mental set, it is the mental set of the individual uh, then he forgets because he was not ready to learn then he is likely to uh, forget because when the things are going on already it is the mind in the learner that it, it, it is difficult uh, will I be able to do it. So, all these apprehensions are already lying in the mind of the learner so likely to forget. Simultaneous performance sometime uh, students do uh, one activity and in gap time they start another activity. I noticed a student who, who was preparing for examination uh, for uh, subject and for GK. I noticed that uh, for particular subject suppose political science he was uh, the student was just focusing 2 hours for political science and in the gap time for 15 minutes was trying to memorize the synonyms for general English or the proverbs. So, uh, my dear friends if this is the case sometimes that kind of second activity may, may interfere in the first kind of activity. So, we have to see that we have to start one activity at a time. Similarity of methods sometimes similar methods interfere in between age and intelligence. This also, this also matters what kind, uh, how much you are grow. Uh, it depends on the age factor and intelligence of the learner uh, how much forget. Then passage of time, if there is a gap interval likely to forget. Then lack of reputation, if reputation is not there likely to forget. Over learning, my dear friends, it is important to know that sometime over learning is the cause of forgetting, loss of material, then distraction and doubt, distraction and doubt also uh, is the factor for forgetting, emotional excitement, sometimes students are uh, very excited maybe in a happy note or maybe in an angry note, then uh, this is the reason for forgetting, pathological forgetting, pathological forgetting is if you are in a frustration or you are in an unpleasant mood, never try to uh, learn the, memo, uh, the material because in that mood you are likely to forget, degree of learning, how much you have learnt the nature of the task, what kind of task you have taken, fatigue, if you are tired you will not be able to memorize, you are likely to forget. Now we will see how to ensure memory improvement. Now see in this slide we are trying to memorize method of improving memory. There are few methods I have taken whole and part method. Stephens and Hanawell suggested whole method uh, that uh, we should follow the whole method. First we learn the material and then uh, we do the question answering. Winch Penstrand suggested part method. He says that if the lesson is long, topic is long, we should divide it in parts, uh, take one part and then uh, just test or evaluate yourself and then take the second part. Recitation method. For the uh, youngsters, recitation method is suggested not for the adults. Space and unspaced method. Before uh, <coughs> suggesting the method, it is to be understood as I have said that it has to be seen what is the age of the learner, what is the intelligence of the learner and what is the mental set of the learner, what are the ideas and what is the task in hand. So, 
after seeing these things we have to decide the method whether to give space and or no space and how much space should be given uh, there is no psychologist no book and no teacher who can suggest how much space you, you cannot suggest in quantity that 2 kg or 2 dozen and, and, and the 5 meters no it is not is such a kind of measurement can be given to the learners but you have to see your capacity how much space you have to give in that material because you you see your capacity and the task in hand what are the goals in your hand so spaced and unspaced there are two methods teacher has to ensure that for which target group for which kind of material space should be given and how much space should be given or there should be no space can be given then the part and progressive method part and progressive method is uh, utilized in most of the time in uh, the topics related to science that uh, problem solving method or project method uh, they ensure more memory uh, some facts you see you are 50% more likely to remember something if you speak it out loud instead of simply reading it over and over in this slide I want just to tell you that if you speak it loudly then it takes firm grip in your mind instead of simply reading you can speak it louder uh, moreover uh, I have uh, read in one study that suppose there was a person who always who used to forget where I have kept the file so it was suggested in some study for such a person when you keep a file suppose you you are keeping a file in second drawer of your Elmira you speak loudly maybe no one is listening you you say I am keeping I am putting this red file uh, of this particular document in my Elmira in the second drawer then it will take grip in your mind no one is listening you in the room but you speak loudly my red file is uh, <clears throat> kept in the second drawer of my Elmira it will take uh, grip in your mind so when you speak loudly simply reading uh, it takes 50% grip in your mind in the second slide writing something out is the memory equivalent of reading it seven times a good tip to know when studying uh, sometimes students keep on uh, reading verbally and they do not write because they sometimes la uh, feel lazy in writing so it is suggested for such students that if you read a thing a concept seven times and you write it one time that writing one time is more effective than simply reading so it is for the students um, who just uh, show the laziness in writing they must write their points after learning after memorizing see in the next slide making a commitment to exercise at least 30 minutes each day is also important you make commitment to yourself and you remind yourself uh, suppose your target is to achieve more than 90 percent you write a slogan on a note uh, on a paper and you just paste it and paste it uh, on your Elmira on your cupboard on your shelf wherever you sit wherever you walk, uh, walk uh, in your room uh, when suppose uh, you have a phone call your friends calls you for a movie then this slogan will remind you oh this is your target this is your commitment so you remind yourself this is my target this is my commitment when you speak this commitment loudly to you then uh, it will stop you you uh, from going to movie and you will study you will focus on your work then the next in the concluding remarks uh, I would like to say see in this slide what is heard only keeps or retains in our mind 20% I mean if we simply hear then the retention of this heard material is 20% and the, what is seen if we see only then it is the 30 percent but if we hear and we see both then the retention is 50 percent but after hearing after seeing and after hearing and seeing both if we practice 
then the retention, recalling, recognition is 90 percent. So, it is for the students to know that do not hear only, do not see only, do not hear and see, rather whatever you hear, whatever you see, you practice yourself as in the uh, Last slide, I have told whatever you read seven times, you write one time that it will take firm grip in your mind. So, again what is hard retain 20 percent, what is seen 30 percent, what is hard and seen 50 percent and what is practiced 90 percent. Now, I am just repeating or telling some more strategies how to ensure more memory because we have discussed how do we forget, why do we forget the concepts which we do not want to forget and why we do not forget the things which we want to forget uh, like unpleasant memories, frustrations, unhappiness and our failures. So, to forget the unpleasant things we have to make deliberate efforts and to ensure the memory also we have to make the deliberate efforts. So, some more strategies I want to put for my listeners, for my students that how to ensure memory because it is the uh, concern of everyone to memorize the concept to and do not forget the things which are important. We have to make efforts so, and some of the things are more motivation and proper grouping. Sometime uh, we forget the things for that we have to make proper grouping. Suppose there is a telephone number which we are not able to memorize. So, a long number, long digits we can uh, make grouping. Suppose there is a telephone number 9873069039. Instead of saying 9863006903, we will be making the grouping. How? 9873006903. So, this way we can memorize after grouping the numbers. If we uh, make the series, we are uh, li uh, likely to forget, but after making a grouping we are not uh, to forget, we are not supposed to forget and the numbers will take firm grip in our mind and the motivation. We have to motivate ourselves how to memorize it and what are the factors uh, for this we have to see there, there should be no apprehension in our mind that this is a difficult aspect and I will not be able to learn it. So, my dear friends, I hope all these strategies are enough to make you feel, make you know that what are the reasons of forgetting and how can we ensure the better memory, what are the strategies on the part of the learner itself and on the part of the teachers and moreover the parenting style and our deliberate efforts. I hope uh, this uh, lecture is useful for all, not for the students only, how to memorize the things in an effective manner and how to forget the things which are unpleasant. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 oh,